today uh, we will uh, have a look through uh, chapter 17 and chapter 18, which are two chapters uh, providing uh, extra features for your plots. So the first one is facetting. And uh, so you, as you may know, facetting is um, um, a, a vis data visualization way to group your data and visualize the results of your grouping. Um, there, there's um, two main uh, ways to do facet, which is facet wrap and facet grid. Then you can even set a facet mule, which means uh, any facet to, to be shown. And this may be useful when you are working on a plot and you want to see different uh, um, different outcomes. So this is not very uh, used very frequently. Okay, the first one is facet wrap uh, and facet as well as facet grid, they are quite similar. Uh, just to uh, illustrate the main differences uh, uh, is that with facet grid, you may um, have more uh, simple um, uh, outline, but then uh, you can add like formulation or uh, extra variables and everything. So they slightly different. We can, uh, what I thought that would be a nice things to do is to uh, do uh, examples and see the things uh, in practice. I think that that would be the best, uh, the best way. So let's load some libraries. And see, for example, this is the um, cars data set. So here, uh, I don't know if you can see the, the chapter as well. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, so here, um, the uh, first things we subset the data set to um, have uh, cylinders, which are not uh, equals to five and uh, the drive um, uh, variable to be within four and F and the class not equal to two seater. So we do, we see that this is a bit like subsetted uh, as, as I said, uh, so we can uh, um, work on a plot for uh, visualizing uh, different things. So what now we see what means facetting, and as in the book we use this um, the example uh, in the book. This is the uh, data set that we've just uh, subsetted, and we use displacement and uh, a h y. Um, I always uh, um, think these variables uh, are the most uh, simple ones, but then, uh, um, you know, maybe it's better if I check this thing first. So be sure that uh, this is the um, highway miles per, ga yep. yeah, miles per gallon. So we want to see displacement and uh, the highway miles per gallon. And uh, first things we set a geom blank, which means nothing, uh, just a canvas. Okay, uh, and this is our base plot. Okay, the, the plot would be this. This is just to visualize what facets are. So the first things that we, we set uh, the facet uh, with the class variable. And you might want to even visualize that if we do, for example, ca uh, count class, we see that class 
uh, is made of uh, these uh, variables compact, uh, uh, mid size, mid band, pick up, etc. So we would like to see this base plot, which I, I didn't run, uh, subsetted by class. Okay, in the first option is to set, this is an option that you can do with facet wrap. So you can assign the number of columns or the number of rows. So this is this will be the first uh, um, outcome. So the first uh, um, visualization of the plot. And then if we do the second uh, with as table false, you, you see that there is uh, uh, no difference. But then uh, the explanation is that when you use, for example, a different variable like this. Okay, so still I have the first one as before with class, and then I set a variable. So this, this will be um, a way for you to uh, visualize uh, specific uh, information. And um, in this case, this is the direction. Uh, let's see if we go through uh, the documentation. It says that uh, you have uh, different options and um, this is facet wrap. So you can even set a direction which is horizontal or vertical. Okay, here we have uh, still three um, elements uh, that we, we want to see. So we have the number of rows, which are three, and before we set to the number of columns. But now we ask for the direction vertical. So this way, the three rows that here we have in columns, are uh, within, um, so it's, that's the other way. So we set the columns on the first option with facet wrap, and we had the variables uh, as the, the column names, while here are um, in the other way, basically, as you can see. So the direction is vertical, not horizontal. Okay, uh, what else? There's a different uh, option that we can use. Um, we can uh, so set the number of rows, the number of columns. We can fix the, the name of the facet with labeller. So we use this labeller function to, to set the, the, the name of the facet. Uh, and then we can even drop some variables if we don't need it. Uh, and then uh, we can make some adjustments. That would be clearer if we go to examples. Then um, what are the difference if we do facet grid? So facet grid is basically a two dimension grid. Uh, and, uh, but this time this is better defined by a formula. Now uh, it's suggested to use bars as the um, uh, instead of the tilde and everything. But when you use facet grid, this, uh, uh, you can use more, so basically it's simpler for you if you want to show like multi uh, variate, um, mo more than one variable within the facet. So like you have uh, uh, some double uh, information. And um, in our case, uh, for example, if we do just this uh, example, Uh, so just as the same as before, but now 
the, this cylinder variable is numeric. So the title is numeric, but uh, um, in this case, if I do facet wrap, the difference, the, okay. Okay. You, ca you can't see difference. Okay. So the only things that you may want to add uh, one more variable here to have an information on both sides. Uh, for example, if we do this instead of the other, now we have, uh, we use this, uh, um, uh, this yeah. uh, front wheel uh, drive, four wheel drive, right? Drive train, yeah, wheel drive. Uh, variable, uh, you see that you, as you have used it on this side of the tilde, your titles, your facet titles are on a side instead of being on top. So you have uh, div uh, divided your visualization by rows, while here they are by column. But then you can use this both. So you can put in the relation two predictors or two variables um, this way. In a way that you can see what happened uh, and the, the, the column names are the cylinders while the row names are the drive things. Okay, so that, that, that would be very useful when you should, this is a blank uh, uh, plot, but we can even, uh, um, I don't know where, where is it? Maybe here, we can use this to see some information inside the facet. So now we use uh, CTI and HYMY, WDY, okay, to see this. So now, as you can see, the cylinder is here and I've used facet wrap. If I instead I use facet, where is it? Facet grid, and uh, as well as before, so all of this. The information that you have is on both sides. So the plot is different. So now you see that uh, uh, in this case, I wanted to, to see what uh, is the relation between uh, um, CTI, okay. So city miles per gallon and uh, the uh, IY way miles, okay. But then uh, as well, uh, I like to group them by cylinders and by drive. So I can see that, uh, for example, Cylinder four belongs to, because this MPG two has been subsetted to, to, to have value uh, for uh, cylinders equals to four and F. So you, you do not have any other option. And the drive variables to be four, six and eight. So the, if, when drive is four and the cylinder is four, your, uh, the relationship between uh, CTI and HWY uh, uh, is grouped uh, between uh, 20 and, and 30. Okay. While the others are more spread away, uh, 
most of them are all concentrated within 10 and 20. Just uh, this F condition of side index is more spread along the, uh, the line. So what if I use uh, my old uh, MPG set, so without subsetting, so now I have all these cylinders uh, information uh, as well as the, as the drive information. But as you can see here, you have nothing to, to share within the two. So, so they, they can co be customized uh, for you. And the, basically uh, it's mentioned in the book that it's a way to group your data uh, and visualize the relationship. Okay, so you might want to group them and then make a plot and then assemble different plots or directly by making facetting. Okay, what else I can say? So one more thing that facet wrap, for example, provides, it's an option which is scales and you, you use with facet wrap and not with facet grid. So it's this scale free. So for example, I have this P plot, okay? So I use P plot and then um, I do the facet wrap and scale free. As you can see, if I don't do scale free, Uh, while if I do scale free, the things changes because each facet um, it's more clear. This depends by your needs when you for, for the visualization. But uh, in this case, you can see the information, the information more clearly because each facet uh, uh, goes uh, within its range. So you can, you can even set uh, scales um, three, um, like just Y, uh, maybe X, uh, sorry, three X. So you let the, the X just to be free while the Y axis are all in common. And, and the, the opposite is this way. This is really neat. I've never I've never used the scales option before. Uh, in in, I've used fasting before, but never uh, with the scales as free or or modified. Um, usually, when you create a facet or whether it's grid or wrap, um, it always has the same measurements on graphical output. So everything. It's just the same image over and over again with different plotted media. By allowing the application to draw in a free form, it's optimizing the scale of presentation for each one of the plotted elements. That's kind of neat. I, I didn't realize it did that. That's neat to see it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly uh, very useful. Because sometimes you don't, you you can't see uh, the information because they use uh, a common scale which is not uh, um, so the, the range within uh, all variables can be very large. So it's very important to sometimes to to be able to use the scale, but then that might might be um, so not not you not be able to use with uh, uh, grid, facet grid. So if you want to use two informations to have uh, subgrouping uh, with variables on the column names, other variables on the row names, you might not be able to do the scale. Okay, now this is the other data set. Uh, this is uh, economics uh, and we have date, uh, variables, uh, values and value zero, maybe the best way 
uh, is to have a look here. So this is a time series uh, because as you can see, there is a, a current information of with uh, day time. Uh, so of date in this case. So most probably when you see this, uh, you might think it's, it's a time series. And this data, data frame is a data frame uh, from US economics time series. And um, the PCE uh, is the uh, variable. So within the variables, the, there's more information like personal consumption expenditures and total populations. So, and we, I, I frequently use uh, uh, count very, very frequently. So if I do variable, I can see what's inside. So without doing tables and everything, just do count if I want to do like, uh, I want to see what's inside. So in this case, economics long has been made long. <laughs> Uh, because they have used mo most probably a pivot longer and made the variables uh, uh, group it this way. So all the information of the consumptions, population and savings and uh, unemployment. Yeah, so what other information we've got we want to say values are the values of these variables and values zero one uh, I can see here mention it but for now I suppose uh, that that would be specified later so we see that with this uh, um, data set, we can we, we like to see what happened within these uh, values, with these informations, and the date. So how they change it along uh, how they change along the time. To do this, uh, it would be nice as a time series, as you can see here in the book, to have a line and usually a line is used for, for representing a time series. And then we use a facet wrap where we can use scale free Y because the X axis are all in common. So we have the time, which is date from 1997. Let's see the date um, count. Okay, the date count, which is from 1967 uh, to, uh, this is not, this can be seen, I should jump to 2015, okay? So we can even change this to, to be just year, so year month, but this is not the case. So what we want to see is the, um time series of these informations uh, so how they change along the way like the consumptions the population the savings the unemployment the employment uh, and so on med is uh, the unemployment and the number of unemployment uh, uh, in thousands and the median of unemployment. So the first is the median, and this is the unemployment. You can see there is no much difference. While the savings are quite, uh, you know, um, troubled. <laughs> so there is up and down. The population is growing clearly, as well as the consumptions. So with facet, you can like visualize more than one variables. And then you, when you do modeling, you decide, okay, this, these are the information I, I'm provided with. So I, I, I want to investigate 
like savings more than population or uh, just the unemployment because the median uh, would be quite similar. So I want to look at the, uh, the, the mean. So you, you do some, some, some reasoning. Then what else? What are the examples we got here? Is so we use um, the subset of MPG two with some just cylinders four and F. We reorder these things, and this means reorder means that in terms of uh, um, the value of models will be in uh, uh, alphabetical order, okay? But now we want to reorder it by the value of, of CTI, CTY, okay? Which is numeric. So it's alphabetic, first, first value in alphabetical order, first value in numerical order for CTY, okay? And so I, re, uh, um, I set reorder beforehand, so that would be useful. I create one more variable, manufacturer. So and this will be ordered in a way that city uh, Y is the top high. So from the greatest to the lowest value. And then uh, I like to see the relationship. And as you can see, this is a bit like portion, but uh, these are all the cars. I don't know if I can do that. Sometimes I cannot do that. Okay. So these are all the, the uh, cars types, the model, and then the submodels. See what I did it um, is even space free, one more option. Uh, so we did manufacturer. Manufacturer is uh, um, so one is the manufacturer and one is the type of car. So you see that we have some um, information about the CTY for, for so each your, sub. Your, yeah. your scale here would be on the, on the left-hand side, uh, Y coordinate would be the type of vehicle, right? The naming convention dedicated to that vehicle. Your... Mm -hmm content on the right hand scale sorry right hand side of the graph uh, your y coordinates would be grouped by manufacturer of that vehicle mm -hmm. the x coordinates across the bottom would be the miles per gallon correct of like fuel economy miles per gallon of that vehicle is that how that's mm -hmm. measured yeah i don't know if you can see it here mm -hmm. uh it's a bit uh other is that covered by by anything? No. Okay. Uh, so CTI, CTY, and model, and then it's faceted by manufacturer. So manufacturer, we have just made this information, which is the uh, made. Uh, so we have reordered it by the highest value of the uh, CTI, CTY. So uh, th th there it is, as well as model. So in a way that you have, uh, uh, as well as before, because these are the manufacturers, okay? And you can see that they are not in alphabetical order. Okay, but they are ordered by the highest level of city Y. 
Okay. In fact, if you uh, searching for Audi uh, for, or, or some uh, particular. Well, I was going to say, look at here. Toyota. Yeah. Uh, Audi, Audi will work too um, between the A4, the A4 Quattro, and the A6 Quattro. Now, I was going to look at the Toyota grouping, uh, your comment of being sorted by the least to highest miles per gallon, correct? Is that the, the way? Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. so it's a negative miles per gallon. So it's inverting that value. What would be normally highest to lowest is now being highest, switched yeah. to lowest to highest. And so looking at the alphabetical list of your Y description, left-hand side, we've got Corolla and Camry. Obviously, alphabetically, those are uh, not in order. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to Sonata. Then it goes back to Camry again. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That's Camry, yeah. Solara, and then Camry. I guess I didn't know the difference between the two. But point being, alphabetically, those are inverted with each other. But due to the fact of being the quantity of miles per gallon uh, sorting, it would invert the two. That It totally makes sense. I understand mm -hmm. the relationship of how those orders yeah. were, were applied. That, that is useful, very useful when you make, uh, even visually, to, to have a trend, which is uh, makes the thing clear. But even when, when you do the bar plots, you have the bars that goes, uh, they have they have a sense. When, when you look at them, they, they, they go on a side on the other side. So this, is, this would be a way to do that. You can do that separately uh, this way, or you can do inside the plot. So I can do this inside here with fact and yours and everything. But the, the, this will, it's more stable doing this separately than inside. I don't know why. OK, sometimes you, you might have uh, missing values. And this is an example here. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Uh, we have this data frame. And this is a, a property of the ggplot that you can add different data sets inside a plot. No? So I have this data frame, the F1. OK, as you can see, I have F, F, and just one M. OK, so if I do a plot of this, uh, without this one here, As you can see, I have two information for the female, most probably, uh, and one information for the male. So I can set up, uh, I may have new data, may have new data, for example. So I have extra data with the F2. I can add them to another layer of ggplot with a different uh, data set. So in a way that I can see them and there it is. So I can make comparison and see that this distance between this, this, and is, I don't know, you, you can do, uh, basically this is the, grammar, the, the layers of the grammar of graphics property. You can add an extra uh, data set for, for you to see the things. What else is interesting is, uh, is the things I was saying before, is the grouping. So we can uh, consider it, um, oops, facetting a way to group data visually. So here, as you can see, this is an example. Uh, and it's a data frame, you have, to two variables and you make a point, a geom point, no, a scatter plot. You see that uh, your Z variable uh, is quite visually grouped within it, in the information within each other. So you have the red here, the, the green and the bluish, the bluish there. So using facet wrap with the Z 
parable, so this one here, you, you can see them separately, clearly, to see how they behave. Okay, then uh, you can even add uh, other information. Uh, let's take this. Okay, this is the data frame and the, the plot that we have just seen it. Then we made uh, a facet. So if I do, if I color, Color Z. Okay, so I can see them clearly. Then uh, there's other other option that we can use. Oops. Okay, so here uh, as well as group it and summarize and then rename. Okay, so I have a new data set, DF sum, which is different. And I used it here. So without is this, and with the extra layer, I can add information within the facet. If you have any questions, just uh, ask me. Not yet, but this is this is really helpful. It is. Yeah. So now um, I select uh, just the two uh, information. And without my extra layer, I have the groups as before. Then I add an extra layer. And as you can see, this is a bit populated and I could change it, its color. Okay, so this is a bit uh, even data wrangling as well than uh, facetting and everything. So other information are for continuous variables. And even these are very interesting, this function here, which are cut interval, cut width, and cut number. So I was using cut today for, for example, if you have a list of uh, ages, okay, and you want to um, uh, split the, your column uh, and group it within like five years, uh, like if you have ages from... Um, yeah, you'll see that a lot in census data where it'll it'll categorize you, what is your age? And then it'll just give you a, a range of like, you know, 35 to 40 or, you know, whatever the, the entry is, that that cut value is just giving you that grouping, correct? Okay, so for example, you, you have this, uh, uh, this vector, okay? So, um, I can, uh, I'm not sure if I can use it, um, with a single vector or I need to make it as a data frame. But in case we, we change it, we see if I use cut and then it's, it's the only one. So, what? okay, so it's done. That That's not visually clear. So that would be better if I can make a data frame. Okay, let's say my DF, I do a data frame with uh, uh, age 
uh, let, let's add an information here. ID colon, which is a sequence from um, from one to forty two by one. Okay, so I can use ID and age. Okay. I don't know why I do these things, but anyway. But okay. So ID and where is the other one? Well, okay, let, let's uh, let's say that uh, I wanted to do this live and uh, not. But anyway, if you um, have this just age, okay, and I do uh, my df and cut age to five. No, okay, forget. Let's, let, let, let's forget that. So you can see that using cut, you can cut the, the information, okay? Uh, let's do that uh, another, another day. So you, you have these functions, which are cut interval, cut width as well. And so you can use uh, these things. And uh, here there is an example, which is already made and shouldn't be troubled <laughs> in any way. Okay, so, okay, here the, there is our uh, MPG2 data set, and I do count with the MPG and displacement by one. So each one interval, um, okay, I can see this. Uh, I have an interval of length one uh, as well as cut interval here is it's length six it's interval uh it's 1.6 this is 2.42 minus 1.6 it's 0 0.82 because cut interval, let's see, cut interval. So it's the length. Okay, and then I have the N, which is the number of intervals I have created. So let's see. For example, if I have cut interval of uh, 100 numbers and I cut it each 10 and I have a table. Let's click here. So I have uh, 10 intervals of length 10.9 minus one of length 10. Okay, so in this case, what I do, and then even have cut numbers because Here, uh, instead I cut the numbers. And then as you can see, they are exactly the same. So there's different ways to do the things. And um, the plot, 
will be this, which is the CDY and the HYWY. I want to see what displacement uh, subset W is showing to me as a difference within the intervals that I've just created. So this is usually for uh, mostly used for ages, but then that would be very important if you want to uh, like make subgroups for your information. What else? Okay, this is all that we uh, have about facetting, and this is the most part of the things. Um, then, uh, even with Geom Smooth, you can use the facet and have the your um, linear model, so the model line uh, be seen in each in each facet. Um, the the next chapter is about themes and this is very straightforward so this is about making a plot nicer so i don't know if you uh, have any questions about uh, this but, um, i have uh, um, i think this is very straightforward and uh, experience will will uh, guide you through and I think, uh, the, the best thing, yeah. Lydia, <clears throat> sorry, I believe it was chapter 11 or maybe chapter 12. Lydia spent some time on, I think it was labeling, but a lot of the elements can be pulled into the theme process of making your graph look more presentable, right? Um, uh, do you, if you remember, she was do, dealing with uh, uh, different color palettes, uh, as you apply it, what are you trying to convey? Um, you can change your color codes, uh, your your theming. Uh, I would assume in this topic would also be probably your text, possibly. Uh, so it's not just pulling on your your common. You can tell the service what text format you wanted to to apply in, etc. Again, I haven't read the chapter, so I apologize. I'm I'm pulling at straws in talking, but. I think for the no, most part, this should uh, yeah, be pretty uh, straightforward. Yeah, no, this, this is uh, absolutely uh, the, the best part of your plot because you, you can make very simple plots. You know, this, this one, for example, is a scatter plot, just simple as it, uh, as it is. But then if you change colors, for example, you personalize the plot. Uh, there's many options, for example, this plot, um, you use a geom jitter, no? And inside the main call of the grammar of graph graphics, you inside the aesthetic, you set a color equal to one of the variables. So this is inside the aesthetic. So as the color is equal to one of the variables and the variables are, I don't know, that can be, uh, this is a character because set as a factor. So as different levels, when you uh, release the plot, you can see different colors. So to personalize these colors all together, you use the scale color. And then there's many options. So that even um, if, if we look, for example, at the uh, ggplot extensions, I don't know if it, because, uh, I have seen uh, uh, this. So there's uh, quite a certain number of uh, uh, extra packages that are in support of ggplot, where you can uh, uh, find um, themes already set, which provide different scales for fields, fill and colors. So just to give you an example, this, this um, was quite nice. And uh, so I was looking at that for another presentation. Uh, 
uh, there it is, the TV tennis, for example, just to, to give you a, uh, an example of what it is. And uh, here, it's a simple plot, like black and white, and you have uh, maybe the colors as uh, ggplot2 provides as a basic, like the reddish, the, the bluish things and everything. Then uh, there's other packages which are supporting ggplots, uh, like this one here. They, what they, they did it is they set up a team and then made of that a function with a name. So when you load the package and you uh, call the team, in this case, the team is Brooklyn uh, 99, the plot come out like this, already blue uh, with, um, you know, this, this uh, fonts and the, this type of colors, the position of the, the legend. So it saves you lots of times. And uh, to, to, to do one more example, for, this is our MPG data set. So this, the last, this chapter talks about the scale, different scale for fill and color options, and all that you can change inside a team. So you can change the title, the text font, the subtitle size, whatever you like. Okay. So for example, the, the, I like that because it's new, but there is Beardis, there is GGT, Themis. That's really many. cool. No, that is, that is. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is, is a very, very awesome comedy show. Um, yeah. somewhat crude humor sometimes, but um, it's, it's well-natured overall. Okay, so here is a list of the basic themes provided uh, by ggplot2 and are all this, uh, th these things here. And for example, they, they suggested here ggthemes, a package supporting uh, for, for, for more team types, and you have Taft, uh, Solarize, Excel, and everything. You have the, uh, even uh, the Economist the, them as well. And this is, this is everything. I don't know if you have any questions in particular, but then you can, these are just options that you can add inside. For example, if you want to change something uh, in, in the team, which is already set and you want to add extra thing, you call this function, the team. So you do the team uh, Excel, for example, and then add team again for changing things of, your, of the basic uh, team that you have set. And this is everything. This is all. Um, if Very you good. have any, yeah. I was going to ask. Do you do you mind sharing that uh, initial website that you had? Uh, I'm 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 quickly googling what it was that uh, took us here. The um, uh, GG extensions. Plus extensions. Yep. Yeah. Okay. GG plus I put it in the chat. Awesome. Outstanding. Thank you for doing that. <clears throat> that that's very nice because there's uh, lots of uh, new packages and well, you can even add yours if you have one do you remember in in many cases we've we've often went in a different direction for topics but they're all re related to the same subject that we're covering this this grammar of graphics um the d3js uh data-driven documents concept uses a similar website. And if you click on any of the icons, it'll automatically give you a, a sample code of being able to use or deploy that particular format of graphic. In this ggplot extensions service, is this related to just RStudio or does it also apply for Python or any other scripting language as well? This is for RStudio. 
Okay, very good, very good. Well, and I guess tidyverse. No, the the tidyverse yeah. is where it wraps it in. Okay, never mind. That makes sense. You you can you you can use yeah. Python with a, with R. Correct. And then all the other things. Yep. Yeah. Now I was thinking of the grammar of graphics as it is applied between Python and our studio. There's a relationship as a service, the, the grammar of graphics being able to, to utilize either or. Uh, I presume that these are also options within Python if a user were to go that route as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So Thank you very much for doing this. And I hope Priyanka is still on if she is hearing. <laughs> The, uh, the communication at all. All right, I'll stop sharing. And um, okay, so thank you very much for attending the session and uh, I hope to see you um, soon. Definitely. So, okay, all right. thank you everyone. Thanks, Bye. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.